On August 11, 2014, actor and comedian Robin Williams passed away. You know, I had intended on doing my first episode back as sort of like a mock clip show, you know, uh, uh, highlights from my first 20 episodes with snarky comments from the other angry men and my executive producer, Gail, and random jackholes I just happened to con into being on the show with me just to show off my new set. Then, my favorite performer and comedian of all time had to go and die on me. Thanks a lot, Mork. Nanu fucking Nanu. Here's your damn ranch show. Greetings, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Film Rants, our first episode back after a long summer hiatus. I am E. Adam Thomas, and with me tonight is Angry Men Review's other really ugly host, well, one of the other really ugly hosts, Drew is not a beautiful man. He is not a beautiful man. Angry Andy is with us tonight. Um, it's uh, kind of a melancholy episode because tonight we're going to be looking at the um, life and career and our feelings about somebody who passed away recently who we really, 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 really fucking liked. Well, at least I did. I don't know about this jackal. What about you? All right. I need to preface my comments by saying that I did love Robin Williams. He was the epitome of a great stand-up comic in the generation where stand-up comedy really came into his own. Between Robin Williams and Bill Cosby and Billy Crystal and all these other comedians that were coming up when people actually realized that stand-up comedy could be funny and be put on televisions and movie screens, he was one of the best, if not the best. I know in my heart he was one of the best. Having said this, fuck you, Robin Williams. Seriously. Okay, it has been a deep, dark secret within the comedy community that when you are funny, it's usually because you have a fucked up childhood and you're actually depressed. But nobody in the mainstream knew this, and it helped me get laid. When you're funny and you're ugly, it can fucking get you laid. But now... Here's what's happened. Robin Williams, I love you to death, but couldn't you have left a note saying somebody fucking shot my kitten and that's why I killed myself? Instead of now everybody knows that you had depression and flipping a drug problem and Parkinson's and all this other shit. So now when I tell somebody, fuck you, instead of them just saying, fuck you back, they go, oh, I'm sorry, what's wrong today? That's not what I fucking want. When I tell a joke, to a lovely lady. It is not to get sympathy, it's to get a blowjob. Fuck! You're married for crying out loud. And it used to work with her, but now she wants to put me on fucking Xanax! Jesus fucking Christ! Back when I was single, I could go up to a girl, and if I was to tell her a joke, I might get somewhere. Seriously, a woman's orifice is like a toll booth, and my jokes were a fucking roll of quarters in my goddamn pocket. I want to fucking get laid, and now I can't unless it's a sympathy fuck, which isn't all that bad, but then I gotta cry afterwards. Fuck you, Robin Williams. Well, they always cry afterwards with you anyway, so at least you're crying together. Well, it's because they know how much I make doing this shit. Well, that's true, too. My big issue with, with Robin Williams passing the way he did is that somebody should have helped him out. I mean, for crying out loud. Okay, we didn't know that he had a depression problem, although well, somebody that manic, there had to be something. Considering but, his history, I think everybody knew he had a depression problem. I mean, yeah. He, well, he, you know, he had a, you know, 
drug issue in the 70s and 80s. He came out about, uh, he had issues that drove his marriage apart that, you know, everybody knew about. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty obvious that there was something going on there. But when you, when you have that kind of clinical depression, when you are that kind of depressed, it doesn't matter if people know about it. You have this weight on you. And in, in America, we have this problem where we won't acknowledge this problem. Yeah. Uh, mental illness is something swept underneath the carpet and people don't want to talk about it. And that's why, you know, suicide is one of the major causes of death in this country. Yeah. And, you know, I, I go through depressive moments in my life. I mean, you know, from time to time, I think we all do. But it's, it's never gotten that strong for me. But I don't have the clinical type of depression that Robin had. And the thing is that people nowadays still treat depression sort of like they, they treat homosexuality. It's a choice. Cheer up! Don't be gay! Wait a minute. That's a, that's, that, yeah, that doesn't it work just either. It doesn't fucking work. Cheer up, don't be gay, but being gay means you're cheerful. But anyway, <laughs> at least in the old-timey vernacular from back when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, back when dinosaurs powered our cars. My feet powered my car. Oh, really? You had one of the uh, Flintstone mobiles? Nice. Yes, yes. Here's, here's the thing. I, I have always loved, I grew up with Robin Williams. I was like, what, maybe 13, 12 or 13 years old when Mork and Mindy premiered. Uh, You're even fucking older than I am. Shut your fucking hole. Um, I just remember, I, I remember seeing him the first time he appeared on Happy Days as Mork. I mean, it was the, you know, he was so such a, like a breath of fresh air. All the other funny guys were just saying these corny lines and the audience was laughing right on cue like so many sitcoms even today do. Big Bang Theory. <sighs> but with Robin, you could tell the audience was like completely just going nuts. Well, he brought so much energy to anything he did that you couldn't help but like him on screen. And and that's the thing. And as an actor, he was he was able to tone himself down. He was able to play an extraordinary diversity of different types of characters, all of whom were completely <coughs> not Robin Williams, and yet they were still Robin Williams. There was still something about each character, even even when he played that creepy photo of that. Look, I took off that. Put my pajamas in the He's ah, not Mindy. The the movie where he was the um, uh, worked in the develop pho developing photographs. Oh, um, I can't remember the name of it now off the top I, of my head. I would have known it if you hadn't fucking said that. I see the picture of him looking like an old grizzled Dr. Seuss character. Looking at films through glasses, and yeah. I think it begins with an I, or an um, L, or maybe an M, possibly a Q. You're a lot of help. You know that? I try. Yeah, you do. You are trying. But the fact of the matter is, he played a really hauntingly terrifying character, but it was still a character you could you could empathize with. You know, there was like a pain and a darkness in the character, which I think actually was also part of. Um, you know, Robin, Robin's inner demons coming out there, too. Another movie that I thought he was absolutely resplendent in, Good Morning Vietnam. I love that movie. That's actually probably my favorite Robin Williams movie. Yeah. One, was, two, you know, me. three. Good Morning Vietnam! <laughs> Quit fucking smoking. That, that, that was... A film that I thought I, I thought you're I about thought. to kill yourself just doing fucking Good Morning Vietnam. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. This was supposed to be my final episode. That is gonna, a, my head was just going to explode. You know, that is asphyxiation. In yeah. some type of a... <laughs> but it, it's just it. The, the thing with movies like that, Goodwill Hunting, Good Morning Vietnam, um, Dead Poet Society, Dead Poet Society, awesome film, is that. He showed that you could be a manic, silly, weird-ass motherfucker and still make you think as a human being and intellectually. He could give you a, a spirit and an a intellectual courage that very few other actors who aren't funny can do. Well, he could do that with his stand-up comedy, too. Exactly. I mean, when he talks about being a dad in his stand-up comedy and how you know his kids affect him. 
it really shows you, wow, well, this is carbonated today. It really shows you uh, uh, that part of being a parent that you understand and you can relate to, even though he's going 50 billion miles an hour. So yeah. it really, it, it, it's just like it, all good comedy comes from not only a dark side, but a familiar side where you really see and can understand where that person's coming from. Exactly. And that's what Robin Williams was good at, was making you feel like he was just like you, only on like speed balls that he'd been doing all day and going 150 miles an hour. <laughs> and you know, I mean, he had conquered most of his chemical demons yeah, early on yeah. in his career. He wasn't doing, he wasn't drinking heavily, if at all. He wasn't doing drugs anymore. He was, he was, he cleaned up his act considerably. But then, you know, finding out that he had Parkinson's. Well, and right. how long ago did he find that out? Because we just heard about we it recently. Heard, I, I think he this. had just fairly recently found out about it as well. And when you you have a problem with depression, and somebody drops you know like that, like that, that kind of bombshell on you, it's very easy to go over the deep end. Being somebody who has just recently found out a lot of health issues myself, I can understand how all this dropping on you, especially if he was already at a low time, can really push you over the edge. So they actually diagnose the stick in your ass? Yes, yes. It's a two by four, um, but it is lubricated, so it's not too bad. Oh, that works. Hopefully they can remove it eventually. No, wait a minute. Your show would go right downhill there if you ever remove the stick in your ass. <laughs> Worse than it is now. <laughs> you got a point there. Well, I would love to keep going on. It's a short show. It's the internet show, and I think we've already gone over 10 minutes or so considerably. This might even be a two-parter, but who cares? It's my show. Okay, so the powers that be will make me edit it. <laughs> anyway, the whole point of this episode is to pay homage to a man who quite literally inspired me to become more out of my shell, so to speak, as a performer, as an actor, as a jackass on YouTube. What about you? Oh, you're more than just a jackass on YouTube. You're a jackass everywhere. Yes, Robin Williams also inspired me to tell him that he is a jackass everywhere. So, there is that. And, if I have one final thing to say, it's fuck you up the ass with a term I covered dildo with it till your bunghole drips shit down your mother's face. And we miss you, Robin. Have a good night. We'll be back to regular film rants next week. I haven't even figured out what movie it's going to be, but I have a feeling it's probably going to be a Doctor Who thing because, hey, <laughs> we're shooting this on the day that the new season of Doctor Who premieres, and I'm just all fucking giddy about it. Nano Nano and Live Long and Pro... Wait, no, wrong way. Never mind. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. I hope you get some tonight. <laughs> Me too. I don't hope you get some. I don't hope you get any either. Get down. <laughs> I am Mark from Mark. Nanu Nanu. The character I do called Reverend Oral Satisfaction. Uh-huh. <coughs> and his Church of the Multiple Comings. Touch a TV. I want to those of you at home to touch the back of your TV and get a shock for Jesus. <laughs> A shock for Jesus. Now don't do it. If there are any children watching, little children, don't mess with the television. Tonight, I would like to talk to you about the serious subject of schizophrenia. No, he doesn't. Shut up. Let him talk. Good morning, Vietnam. Hey, this is not a test. This is rock and roll. And I'm fascinated. I'm in. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? You're terrified of what you might say. You move, chief. <laughs> <laughs>